please welcome to the stage State Senator George Lang. Time. Come on! Hey, we are in the fight for the soul of our nation. We are in a fight for our kids and our grandkids, a fight that we can never imagine. I believe wholeheartedly Donald Trump and Butler County's J.D. Vance are the last chance to save our country politically. I'm afraid if we lose this one, it's going to take a civil war to save the country, and it will be saved. Her campaign manager and Jen O'Malley Dillon, the former chair of the Biden campaign, will run her campaign as well. Harris praised President Joe Biden's legacy and accomplishments and then shifted her focus to the vision of her campaign and her opponent. Before I was elected as vice president, before I was elected as United States senator, I was the elected attorney general, as I've mentioned, of California. And before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women. Fraudsters who ripped off consumers. Cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. Yeah. <laughs> Building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. <laughs> because we here know when our middle class is strong, America is strong. And we know that's not the future Donald Trump is fighting for. You know, um, Cuddy Kay, American politics uh, has gotten a bit old of late. <laughs> and I remember it may have been Teddy White who was looking at JFK uh, from behind when he was president. He said, oh, my God, a young man's hair. You see Kamala Harris and you go. Oh my God, hair! I mean, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like what? This race has just radically changed because whether you're Democratic or a Republican, so many people have said, "Why is everybody so <laughs> old that's running for president of the United States?" And you look at Kamala Harris, and it's like it's a dramatic difference. I mean, we're talking. You know, she's, uh, what, 19 years younger yeah. than Donald Trump? Decades. I mean, this is a real generational shift. I know a lot of people, you know, may be saying, you know, you've got Republicans being just total idiots attacking her as being a <laughs> DEI candidate. And I will tell you, 99% of Americans don't even know what those letters stand for. But they know that it's probably racist. And it's just not the way to go. But, oh, there it is. Oh, hi, Timmy. Uh, but I will tell you, it, when, you when, when I look at, at, at the vice president, I'm just looking at a, a, somebody that is a generation younger than Donald Trump. And I think it's going to energize a lot of people uh, that, that Democrats need to win this election. Yeah, it's been old and white and male. And one of the things I love about Kamala Harris is she's a couple of weeks younger than I am, and everybody is saying how young she is. So I'm turning 60 this year. Awesome. I'm thrilled. I I, that is yeah. just great. Now I feel like I'm one of the young crowd, too. It's just, you know, thank you, Kamala Harris. Look, one of the criticisms of her 2019 campaign was that she didn't really have a message. But we heard there a very clear message. She laid out what her agenda is going to be, and in one day, she's managed to put the focus back on Donald Trump. The problem for Joe Biden in the end was that it was all about him and not about him in a good way. By going up to Delaware in the speech she gave yesterday, she's already turning the prosecution against the opposition. And that's where the Democrats need to be. They need to make this race 
about Donald Trump. So that's why you're hearing not just the relief that the kind of nightmare of the last couple of weeks is over, but also this sense of excitement that there is around her candidacy and her ability to prosecute this case. Now, as Mika said, this is going to be hard. It's going to be hard because she is a first, but it's going to be hard because Donald Trump, while he's beatable, most Democrats believe, he's not easy to beat. And so there's some sense of, no. is she going to be political athlete enough to do that? And I think we'll see that in the next few weeks. VP Harris. Is anybody... Well, it's not VP Harris. It's now the nominee to be the President of the United States of America. Is anybody really uh, surprised uh, at the level of vitriol and uh, nastiness which is now being aimed in the direction of uh, VP Harris? Uh, you can see what Biden did. Uh, he let the Republicans have their RNC conference, uh, spend all their money, all their budgets, pour all their hates, their jokes, everything they could to smear President Biden, and uh, then that was over. They've allocated their money. Uh, and then he announced he's stepping down and that um, Ms. Harris has taken over. President Harris has a good time. And I think former guy is stuck. Uh, stuck in the ages as well, because it's quite clear. There are only two avenues that right now various people within the Republican Party and on cable news are attacking uh, Kamala Harris. I keep on getting told off for pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, pronouncing her name wrong. Okay, whatever. Um, the fact she's female and the fact she has a light brown skin. I know it seems really obvious that we're in 2024, but I'm not a member of the Republican Party or on Fox News. We're going to have a little more on that, but first, here's what J.D. Vance had to say. Let's listen. When I see her give a speech, and she talks about the history of this country, not with appreciation, but with condemnation, but you, if you want to lead this country, you should feel grateful for it. You should feel a sense of gratitude. And I never hear that gratitude come through when I listen to Kamala Harris. I don't know Kamala. I served in the United States Marine Corps and I built a business. What the hell have you done other than collect a government check for the past 20 years? Uh, prosecuted criminals and, you know, served as attorney general, served as a U.S. senator, served as vice president, I guess. Yeah. No, just a Wait a second, question. Mika. Are you, are, you saying, are you saying what? that she was prosecuting Service. generals? I mean, prosecuting criminals. Uh, criminals. Mm -hmm. While J.D. Vance was wearing his little tech vest, getting mm -hmm. paid millions and millions of dollars by Peter Thiel, and saying, I love San Francisco. Like and calling <laughs> calling Donald Trump Hitler. Is that is that what he's saying? Like, does he really want to compare his record to her record? Because it's not really good. It's not really good if you look at what's happened over the past several years. And the guy has just yeah. completely flip-flopped go, from going, he, he may be America's Hitler, to suddenly saying that he's like the future. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I think this is going to be a real uh, challenge. Maybe not. Some people are so mean they can't see beyond themselves. But Mara Gay, to run against Kamala Harris, who is accomplished, who is a black woman, and I think they're going to um, bump into walls, let's just put it that way, along the way, as they try and run against her. The Republicans, the right-wing media, I was watching some yesterday, making fun of her voice. I mean, we're talking middle school stuff. Um, and it's not a good look. I don't know how people will respond to this, but they <laughs> they seem to be grasping. And that's that is actually um, what this change has created in terms of, of a dynamic now of uh, a race between Donald J. Trump and Kamala Harris. It's complicated. You know, I guess in not quite knowing what the line of attack should be, the Republicans in in 2024, their first instinct is just to be racist and sexist. I guess that's right. like a, a tick that they've developed at this point. Um, you know, the problem for J.D. Vance and for the Trump campaign is that anybody who, any voter who is going to be responding to that by voting for them was probably not going to vote for the Democrats anyway. So what they're actually doing is they are motivating every Democratic voter every fence sitter, every independent voter, and people who just are disgusted by racism and sexism and want to see a multiracial democracy continue to the polls. You know, when the AKAs hear that, 
they're going to march in formation to the poll. So that's the contribution that J.D. Vance is making. I mean, saying you should be grateful uh, for this country, it's just all that is is a dog whistle calling her uppity. Every black voter in America knows that. So this is really not helping his case, but I guess that's just their go-to line. If When all else fails, just try racism. Well, and, and, and how, how rich, coming from a guy who is on a ticket that has constantly bashed the USA, that has constantly said the American dream is dead, that has constantly said that the men and women that are in the United States Armed Services are weak and woke when they are stronger than they've ever been relative to the rest of the world. How ironic that you've got a guy that actually is part of a ticket. And look at their words, not mine. Look at their words. That's done nothing but dare, tear down the United States of America. Saying that Kamala Harris seems like an ingrate. Donald Trump inherited like $400 million from his daddy. Like, it, you talk about a silver spoon. Like, he's been given everything anybody could be given in this country. And all he does is trash it. All he does is say that this is a horrible country. All he says is it's a weak country. It's a terrible country. And only he can save it. I mean, the hypocrisy, Jonathan, is, is, is terrible. And, and these, these veiled attacks that aren't really that veiled, they already ha This is the problem with J.D. Vance as a vice presidential pick, and I think they already know it now. The problem is they had all those voters after Charlottesville. All the dog whistles, they had that after Charlottesville with Don when Donald Trump said they're good people on both sides. They had those voters. They need to get the voters now in the suburbs of Atlanta and the suburbs of Milwaukee and the suburbs of Philly and the suburbs of Detroit. That doesn't get them there. So I think this race is going to get even more interesting. And I just wonder if they are capable of adjusting to doing what they need to do to actually bring new voters into the fold. Yeah, the